From the beginnings of clinical outcomes research and evaluation, we have often used a strategy of studying change that involves line charts and bar charts showing change over time on aggregate measures. Depending on the measure, sometimes it's good if it's going up, sometimes it's good if it's going down. We test the statistical significance of these changes in a variety of different ways in an effort to determine whether these changes that we're observing are reliable. This has been our standard approach to understanding personal change. Turns out, that's a bad idea. When you look at this type of line graph reflecting changes over time, you see metrics moving, but sometimes, particularly for more person-centered outcomes, it's extremely difficult to know what it means, even if it is statistically significant. We have created all sorts of workarounds to try and understand clinical significance, but at the end of the day, our metrics have been arbitrary, and there's no real way to interpret the full meaning of change. Somebody might have moved from a 17 to a 13, Okay, but what does that mean? Nobody knows. This problem is soluble. The reason why we have arbitrary metrics is that our measurement theory forces us to create metrics by adding together ratings for multiple items. Ratings on one item, maybe that's interpretable, but probably not if it's a Likert scale. The sum or average of items is arbitrary. You simply cannot know what it means. One of the characteristics of a communometric measure is that it's reliable and valid at the item level. And because of its action level format, it's non-arbitrary. You know exactly what every single number means. This opens the door to a completely different approach to understanding personal change. Consider the following. Communometric measures have at least 50 different items or indicators. Now I'm sure you can picture understanding somebody in two dimensions. We do it all the time. Let's say those two dimensions are suicide and depression. Some people are not depressed and not suicidal. Some people might be depressed and not suicidal. Some people might be depressed and acutely suicidal. And we understand their location relative to each other in this two-dimensional space. Or let's use a strength example. So let's pick talents and interests and spiritual strengths. So some people might have neither. Some people might have one or the other. Some people might have both. Let's say they sing in a church choir. Now let's take it out to 50 dimensions. That's the full profile of needs and strengths or whatever indicators that are on your TCOM tool. We can't really picture it in our heads, but perhaps we can imagine it like a 50 dimensional cloud where each possible combination of ratings is a different location in that cloud. Actually, there are more locations in that kind of cloud than there are people who have ever walked the face of the earth, more than two quadrillion. Intriguingly, there's a location in this cloud that represents ideal well-being. That's a profile that's a ratings of zero on every single item. So once you've located a person in that cloud based on their current story, you can understand their journey towards health as the distance they travel from their location towards this origin in the 50-dimensional cloud. Then you can study change as moving towards, moving away, moving parallel to this ideal point of well-being. This is a way of representing change that is far, far more sensitive to understanding the process of personal change than our current practice. It doesn't reduce people to a single score. You're not a 13. You maintain your location in this close to infinite cloud. Our first proof of concept analysis with this particular approach, one of our analysts looked at youth who were resolving depression. So they're moving from a three or a two to a zero or one. And when you looked at their trajectories, most of those young people were moving towards health and well-being. But there was a subset of those kids who were actually moving parallel to health and well-being. And they were actually moving to a part of the cloud that was better characterized by oppositionality and anger. That's important because that means subset of kids who are depressed, when you resolve their depression, they're headed towards doing well. But there's a subset of those youth that as they resolve their depression, now you see something else. And then your approach to treatment needs to be something else. We have just begun to tap the surface of this new methodological approach. So stay tuned. Or 
join us in the TCOM Collaborative and help us on this journey.